A big meeting today will bring together a legislative committee and the independent commission working on redistricting in Utah. But Robert Gerke says the whole process was rigged from the start. And he joins us live on Zoom to talk about it. And Robert, it's not even a possibly rigged. You say it just flat out is rigged. Why? Well, I mean, I think, you know, from the get go, this uh, independent uh, independent redistricting commission was purely an advisory commission. The maps that they are going to propose today are not necessarily what the legislature is going to adopt. The legislature can do their own thing. And what I learned last week was that while this independent redistricting commission was still finishing its work, senators, Republican senators in their closed caucus were already passing out the working map for for their districts for the coming uh, coming redistricting cycle. Uh, they got a map. They got a, a partisan analysis of voting trends in, in those districts over the last several elections and looking forward. So they're already well down the road on this now. In fairness, to be completely, you know, to give the, to give them the benefit of the doubt, they can still, after they if they hear something they like today, still adopt uh, what the redistricting commission recommends. But it seems pretty clear that the that the legislative committee is, is already well down the road on this and, and making decisions on how to carve up the state for the next ten years. Well, one of the big stories we talked about last week was uh, former Congressman Rob Bishop just deciding that he was resigning from a committee because he could tell where this was going and that it was not just, you know, kind of a blind study on how to do this. So let's talk about, though, why this happens. You know, the data isn't supposed to necessarily be available about who's voting for whom in each uh, district, each area, but it is readily available as they're looking at this. Yeah, yeah, this is my third redistricting cycle. I know I don't look that old, but... Um, <laughs> time they do it, you know, as soon as the new map comes out, it's sent both parties get it and do a partisan analysis on it, on the partisan competitiveness of these districts. And there is a certain tendency to benefit incumbents in this. People who are in the legislature or in Congress want to retain those seats. And so those are considerations that are taken into account when they're making these, uh, drawing these lines. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously the partisan data is going to be one of the factors that they consider. In this instance, you know, in the Senate case, they they had a spreadsheet and each one has, okay, my my district is now 53% Republican or 62% Republican. And so they know exactly what they're dealing with. And that's going to be a consideration. And it's important for the members who are representing those districts to know that uh, because they want to be able to keep those seats. But it's not necessarily the way it's supposed to work. It's not the way the Independent Redistricting Commission did. They didn't look at the partisan data. And, and frankly, the, there, there have been a couple of Outfits, one the Princeton, uh, one out of Princeton University, that's looked at these maps now, scored these maps that the Independent Redistricting Commission came up with, and given them, frankly, really high scores on competitiveness, on keeping, on maintaining communities of interest, all the all the factors that they were, wanted to look at at the start, and so they've got some good maps that they're going to be presenting to the Legislative Committee today, but again, it, it's it's purely advisory. The Legislature Representative, uh, the Speaker of the House, Brad Wilson, has said pretty forthrightly that it's going to be the legislature that makes the decision and sure they'll consider what the redistricting commission has to say, but that doesn't mean that they're going to abide by it. And the thing that's important to remember is the reason we have this redistricting commission in the first place is that in the, you know, the, Proposition four, voters voted for this. In Proposition four, a majority of them wanted an independent commission to be drawing these lines because they're tired of the partisan considerations, the self-serving considerations that go into this. And so, you know, it remains to be seen, I guess, if 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 maybe there will be a miracle and maybe, you know, maybe Spencer Cox will use some of his muscle, threaten a veto if they don't incorporate at least some of what the Independent Redistricting Commission recommends. But at this point, it seems like the trains left the station, and and it's going to take a, something fairly drastic to to get those maps that the redistricting commission recommended considered in any meaningful way. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. Robert Gerke, thanks so much for uh, talking with us, and our viewers out there, you can read more in Robert Gerke's column on SaltLakeTrib.com. Have a good day. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, thanks, Robert.